Thank you for joining us for Lunch Break with Pastor. This is for the 27th. It is for Thursday of this week, the last week of January. It is a day that we pray. If you want to pray the Word of God with us, it's a very unique thing, thing we do. We pray the Word. Um, come check us out here at um, my father's house um, at our address there at 3910 East Patrick Lane at 12 o'clock. We pray the Word. Um, and then at 6.30. So I'm really... Um, we, you know, we hear the word on Wednesday night and then we pray that message. So it's like the message gets deep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Think about it. Um, our pastor has taught us this in his own personal, you know, time with Jesus. It's about reading the word. And then as you're inspired by what you read, you pray from that. And so that's like the faith is inside of you because you've been inspired by what you read to then pray. The faith is in you to pray that out because it inspires you. And then, and then from there, it grows. It, the Bible talks about singing in worship and singing, you know, in, in the spirit and where God just adds. So when we pray the word of God, we get it inside of us. We don't just hear it. We start praying it out. And I'm excited about that because that's what we do. And that's what we've been doing over our area, our Southeast area. And we've seen results. You know, we've seen results in the change of the, um, you know, the crime rate is coming down and has come down um, compared to other areas. So we see, um, and this has held on for about five years. So we see something that would be a sign and a wonder. And I'm just set, letting you know that because we're praying today. And one week ago, we prayed just before our outreach and God moved. And during that outreach, I'll share something with you that happened. And, and what the Lord ministered to me. Oh, by the way, if you want to give to the work of God, hit the shop on website button on Facebook, takes you the donate now button at mfhlv.com. During the outreach, um, I think I mentioned this, but if I didn't, during the outreach, I didn't. The very be beginning of it, I wanted to do a Facebook Live. So I went ahead and started a Facebook Live and things were going really well. And all of a sudden, um, it was supposed to be, you know, sun out, not out a little bit, some wind. It's winter time, so you really don't want some wind, you know, blowing cold on you. But it wasn't bad. The sun was out more than we thought it would be. And this gust of wind came in that was nasty. I mean, it picked up a speaker and threw it on it landed on the ground. We're talking about the asphalt. So there goes that speaker cabinet. Boom! Right in the middle of my Facebook Live. And I'm like, I saw the thing just bounce. Boom, boom, boom. And um, it worked after that, but it was like, that was nasty. And, um, and, I, and I felt that and I thought, wow, this could disrupt everything. So I immediately thought, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do what Jesus said to do. And I just spoke a prayer out and I said, you know, peace, be still. Jesus spoke to the wind. That's a whole sermon in itself. He spoke to trees. <laughs> he spoke to things that were dead and told them to live. So the word of God has power in it, so we just prayed the word of God. It was fine the rest of the time there. But after the whole thing's done, and, and it was such a great time, and, and people came to know the Lord, and people came back to Jesus, and um, it was just great, you know? And the people got ministered to with food and with help from the community as far as like um, people with Medicaid, help with the Medicaid, people with the help with uh, just um, getting their GED, you know what I'm saying? These things are available to them out there. So this type of help was there. The police were there with all that they can do, all the community resources they can, they can talk to you about, dealing with crime and all the issues and varieties of, of um, what, what involves crime. And um, anyway, in the midst of all that stuff, God showed up and we saw this this, this great, um, wonderful thing happened, and it's still happening now with the people's lives that were touched. But that gust of wind hit, and when I prayed about it that night, because I'm, I'm being mentored by my pastor, and he advises us after we minister to go pray, and there's a parable that Jesus spoke when his disciples said, Lord, increase our faith, and he told them a parable of how their faith would increase, and it had to do with after you minister, Spend some time with the Lord, minister to him. So I was doing that, I was practicing that, and I felt the Lord minister to me. 
that he wanted us to experience, he wanted me to experience that adversity of that wind coming. And it just put me in check and let me know, and you can believe this or not, that if we hadn't prayed, if we hadn't covered what we did in fasting and prayer, if we hadn't prepared like we're supposed to, that thing would have tried to dominate the day or that hour or that time. But because we had done what we're supposed to do, it was put in check. And I needed to taste a little bit of that adversity as a reality a check of what's out there, of how God is able to and does keep us from a storm. Um, and even if we're in a storm at times, he will keep us in the storm and we're able to walk on a storm. And these are different you know, levels of God just training and like he trains his disciples, you know, of, of, of just what was out there. But because of him, because of obeying his, his way he wants things done, we're walking in victory. I just wanted to share that with you. Um, this is Matthew chapter 16, verses 17 through 19. I'm going to kind of just hit mainly on one verse, but I might dance around the other ones. So I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Um, last, um, yesterday, we talked about how God had made Paul a wise master builder for these last days. And here we are with Jesus as the wise master builder speaking to us. See, he is the, we've never lost our head. <laughs> Jesus is the head of the church. Um, other people may lose their minds, but we've not lost ours. And um, I shared this on our second su Sunday service today. I felt the Lord gave this to me. Um, here we are, the church, right, um, of Jesus, correct? Um, Christians. Um, if you're considered a cult of Judaism because it's the same God, And yet, we've not lost our head. The Bible says in the New Testament, he is the head of the church by whom the whole body is knit together and gets its nourishment from. Well, before the head, or the revelation of, of, of Christ as the Son of God and as the Messiah, you have the Jewish faith. They don't receive, recognize Jesus as the Messiah necessarily as their, you know, that's not their faith, but they were still God's chosen people. And guess what? They're still around because of God's building. <laughs> he is the wise master builder. He has a plan for them. Other nations that tormented the Jewish people way back when, the Jebusites, the, the Canaanites, you know, all these nations, they're not around anymore because he... God wasn't their head, but God is the head of the Jewish nation. Whether they receive Christ as the Messiah yet or not, he still chose them. He still says they're mine. And his mercy is still upon them, and that's why they're still around. Why? Is it because of them? It's because of who their head is. <laughs> Who's the boss? <laughs> Who's the one that they're subject to, that they're called to? that they're in covenant with through a promise. Maybe they're not in relationship with them. Like they, some, I hear some Jews call them secular Jews. They're still called. Let's hit that one verse. Matthew 16, 18. And this is Jesus speaking to Peter. And I say unto you, you are Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's when Peter got the revelation of who Jesus is. Nobody else quite had an idea who he really is, that he really is the Messiah. He really is who he says he is. It's not a slogan. It's not a great line. It's for reals. And that's when Jesus, the wise master builder, spoke to somebody else who he put in charge of building his church and said, you, I'm changing your name. <laughs> I'm changing who you are. Prepare 
for more than what you are or what you think you are. Prepare for the image of God to explode outside of you. And that began to happen in Peter when Jesus changed his name. We'll tie this up tomorrow. A kiss to the king.